I'm asking my kid to stop, but I can't do it myself. But um, it's important to recognize what's in my house, right? The parents who think they're like smoking weed on the down low and Junior doesn't know about it, mm -mm, they know. Not only have they, do they know, they've been in your stash, right? They know where all your little hidey holes are in the house. Um, some kids are getting high with their parents, smoking weed. And uh, I think it's important if parents have drug and alcohol issues, address them, right? If you are the partner of a husband or a wife or you know whoever you're living with who has a drug and alcohol issues and you're like, there's no way I'm gonna get them to stop, check out Al-Anon. Kids can go to Alateen. The Dick Prody Lecture Series, which has been at Shepherd Pratt forever, in the big conference center on Wednesday nights from 7 to 9 p.m., I believe is going online. Google it. Dick Prody, Shepherd Pratt. He gives a fantastic free lecture on what is addiction. And people can, can check that out. But, you know, even if the person in your home, the other adults in your home are using, you can still, you know, have an expectation that your child not use. And I think it's important to say to your kids, you know, sometimes we think they know, say to your kids, you know, I don't want you to drink. I don't want you to use drugs. You know, just in, in, in as trite or silly as that sounds, I think it's important to make that super clear with kids. And the third thing I want to talk about is if there's smoke, there's fire, right? Most kids who get into drinking or smoking weed or anything like that, unless they're getting high with you or drinking with you, they're going to try to keep it on the down low. So if you start seeing things bubble to the surface and um, you start finding things or something seems off, then something is off. Because if kids are getting to the point where they're sloppy, where they're leaving evidence around, you know, you, you need to realize that you're probably just seeing the tip of the iceberg. Because kids that are using um, sometimes want to keep doing that. And they're not going to tell their parents or they're going to tell their parents as little as possible again so the parents will kind of shut up and, and go away now regular kids will you know maybe they get caught there are consequences um will stop right whether they're natural consequences like i got really drunk and i vomited all over myself um or the parents catch me and i'm grounded now i think it's important for parents to think about a couple things talk with your spouse about, what, and hope, hopefully before this happens, what are we gonna do if we found it, find out our son is drinking, our, our son is using drugs ahead of time? So you're not like panicked, right? Um, do we agree? Because sometimes there are couples where dad's like out smoking weed back in the shed and mom is, you know, doesn't like that. And you might have parents that are coming at it from two very different angles and it's important I think to discuss that ahead of time you know you might not think that marijuana is like a demon right but that doesn't mean that you might be okay with your kid smoking weed and while I'm talking about like the topic of, of marijuana um, parents need to realize the marijuana that's out there for kids right now is not the same stuff that you were smoking back in high school in 1989 right THC is the active ingredient in marijuana. Back in the day, marijuana probably had three to 5% THC, unless you had some special like hookup, right? Today, it's about three times stronger easily, right? We're talking 12 to 30% THC, but that's not what kids necessarily are using. A lot of kids use, are like today like to vape, marijuana. And what are they vaping? They're vaping cartridges. They're vaping something called dabs, which is the very high or THC concentrate, right? So they might be smoking dabs that have 75 to 90% THC, which is nuclear powered weed, right? And I used to say, you know what? If you find that your kids are smoking dabs, they're not new users. And I generally stand by that, right? Because most kids will sort of, you know, they're not going to go to grain alcohol if they've never drank Miller Lite first, right? Dabs are like grain alcohol. But you are having kids that are naive who might accidentally or naively smoke dabs and have a really bad reaction. Now, 
Before I worked at Shepherd Pratt on the psych units, you could have never told me in a million years that kids who smoke weed can have a psychotic break. Never. I would have thought that was some sort of scared straight stuff or it must have been laced or whatever. I cannot tell you how many kids I saw who had a psychotic break from smoking the super strong weed, right? Sometimes it was um, repairable, if you will. They could get antipsychotic medications that would bring them back from the edge. Sometimes the kids didn't come back. Um, usually those kids were kids that had a family history of psychosis, right? Somebody's schizophrenic, somebody has mania or depression with psychotic features. It's critical to know if that kind of stuff runs in your family. Because if that runs in your family, your kids should not smoke weed and they need to be informed of why. Use of marijuana can bring forward a, a diagnosis of some sort of psychosis by 2.7 years. And so I would ask kids, just generally when I was talking to kids, how many of you guys know people that smoke weed and they got kind of paranoid, right? Like where's the police, right? Most kids would raise their hand. Then I would say, hmm, how many kids do you know that when they smoke weed, hear and see things that aren't there? Maybe just a few hands. And I would say to those kids, that's not normal. That kid needs to find out if he has a family history of psychosis in his family. Because marijuana is a hallucinogen, right? And you smoke super strong stuff and uh, you can potentially uncover that mental illness in yourself. And trust me, you do not want to have a, a, a person in your family who has psychosis. That's difficult to deal with. Um, in terms of uh, other stuff that, that parents should do, besides talking about family history, besides setting a good example, besides talking to their spouse about, okay, how are we going to handle if, if this comes down the pike? Make things a little easier for your kids. And what I mean by that is set a curfew right it has been shocking over the last 25 years uh, and certainly for my youth how many kids went from having curfews to kids being like curfew what's that right there's all sorts of bad stuff out there and if your kid can sort of like run the street and stay over whenever or they're supposed to be home by midnight but they can like text you at 11:55 p.m and say can i stay over at johnny's house that's not doing them any favors now they might complain, oh, you're the only parent who does this kind of stuff, but setting some limits, just like when they're little, right? Setting some limits and, and letting them know this is okay, this is not okay, helps them know when to rein it in. Sometimes that knowledge that, oh my God, if I get caught doing this, my mom or dad is gonna kill me, helps them make decisions, right? And if they get caught, uh, whatever, Conse well, number one, you need to lay down some sort of consequences, right? Um, and I'll say more about like marijuana in, in terms of that in, in just a moment. But you need to have something. Don't say you're grounded for, you know, my goodness, I used to get grounded for a month at a time in high school. But don't say you're grounded for a month and then after two and a half days be like, whatever, you know? Uh, the family therapist that I worked with would often talk about adolescence and substance abuse treatment and say their parents often relapse before the kids do, right? Because holding those limits and listening to the barrage from your kid, and addicts typically, um, or substance abusers in general, basically manipulate people in three ways. They rush you, they scare you, and they pull at your heartstrings. Sometimes all in the same conversation, right? So having a partner, having people that can help you hold the line, I think is important. Um, sometimes people will give away, kids will give away uh, how much of a drug and alcohol problem that they have by how much they fight you about it, right? Uh, kids that are like losing their minds, mm, they're kind of letting you know how in love they are with substances. And people that develop addictions are in love with the effect that they get from the, the drugs and alcohol or whatever you know the case may be, right? They're in love with it. It's kind of like stalker level right and you're not going to go up to a stalker and say hey guess what stalking's bad and they're going to go oh my god i didn't know right same with kids who have already kind of flipped that switch in themselves you're not necessarily going to go guess what drugs are bad and they're going to go oh my god thanks i'm never going to touch it again mm -mm. right sometimes kids who are sort of normal 
substance users, they have something bad happen, they get caught by their parents, they'll be like, this stinks, and they won't do it anymore, right? The kids who have already had that flip switched for them, like I said, will sort of bide their time, if you're lucky, right? So I want to get back to the point of, well, what if I just let my kids smoke weed in the house, right? I can supervise them. Um, you know, I smoked weed back in the day. And I always tell people, look, you know, let's compare marijuana to drugs like heroin, right? Which I shouldn't even say heroin because it's all fentanyl, right? Um, heroin might be the butcher knife, you know, but marijuana is still, you know, like the butter knife, right? And the one thing that I see with people who are addicted to marijuana is that they're like maintenance alcoholics, right? You might not even know if they're high because they do everything under the influence. And a lot of times people who become maintenance marijuana addicts, they just sort of get stuck, right? They're not necessarily out like robbing banks. They're just sort of stuck, right? Stuck emotionally. Um, even if they're successful now, understand just because somebody is successful or good at stuff, good grades, good at sports, good in business, whatever, doesn't mean that they don't have a drug and alcohol problem right? Because addicts by nature are obsessive people and some people are good at doing all sorts of other stuff, right? And being successful, they can hide behind that. Then there are some people who get arrested every time they cross the street, right? And they have like an interstate 420 shirt or whatever, and the bong's falling out of their pocket. You know, like it, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that person has a problem, right? But again, back to the watch the style. Now, why am I saying it's not a good idea, or at least in my opinion, to let kids smoke weed in your house, okay? Um, you have to understand that kids' brains aren't fully developed till they're 25, 26 years old. And they develop from the back to the front. What's the last part of the kid's brain to be developed? The frontal lobe. What does the frontal lobe control? Decision-making, good judgment, and inhibition. And when people drink and get high, no matter who they are, what's the part of your brain that gets affected? The frontal lobe. So parents think about it, right? Your friend that is just nice as pie and just a sweet little thing, like gets super drunk and then they're whipping their shirt off and you know, twirling around their head. Why? Because their judgment's off. They're uninhibited. I used to say to my kids when I was lecturing, I would say the reason why nobody came naked to school today is because your frontal lobe is working correctly. But when people impair their frontal lobe, they're gonna do stuff they might not ordinarily do. Okay, when that frontal lobe is impaired, impaired again and again and again and again and again, it changes things. And I would tell kids there's a big difference between somebody who starts to smoke weed at 14 versus 24, 34, or 44. Because when you're a teenager, you're still determining the trajectory of your life.